So April, what do you feel has been the most significant change that you've seen in how business views diversity? Wow, that's an excellent question. Um, I think the most significant change has been how it's not so Eurocentric and it's not so Euro capitalistic centered. We get the opportunity now as independent business people to create the way we want to see it. So we really are the change we want to see. Um, even though I've studied business and I've studied business dynasties, I've studied it not because I wanted to emulate it, but I studied it because I wanted to learn from the flaws because I don't think that um, purely capitalistic, Eurocentric viewpoint really works for everybody. I believe in the good of the whole, and um, I want something that works for everybody. Love it. Thank you. Purcell. Yes. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> so you were challenged to bring a healthy food establishment to your community, challenging the landscape of fast and processed food. Have you seen a continual evolution, change in what's available, and can you talk more about that? Um, yeah, definitely. Um, in the general area, I haven't really seen much change, to be honest with you. Um, outside of uh, Simply Wholesome, there's one of the location in Inglewood stuff I eat. Uh, outside of that, uh, I would say no. Um, it's pretty much still the same. A lot of fast food spots in the community. The change that I have noticed over the last maybe 10 years have been primarily from people of color. And what I mean by that, I'm speaking of maybe uh, Trinidadian restaurants, Jamaican restaurants, Belizean restaurants, uh, Ethiopian restaurants. Um, uh, there's a lot more diversity in Latin restaurants um, in the communities now. Um, but outside of that, no, it's pretty much the same. So, isn't that disappointing? <laughs> well, it's, it, yeah, it is. I, I, mean, I mean, and I say that because, so I was talking to Zach, I, my, formal job, my former job was at Campbell Soup, and there is a fresh food revolution mm -hmm. that is happening right now in America, hence Whole Foods, hence Trader Joe's, hence, you know, all of the pretty produce we now see, hence the organic food sections. But the fact is, is that, that it, you are not seeing that in that way come to this Well, neighborhood. no, I think a lot of it is that, first of all, those entity, entities that you mentioned, they don't feel, first of all, I think that we can afford those products. And then a lot of those individuals, in my opinion, doesn't really want to come into the community and deal with us. I think it's basically if you want our products, then you come to us. Mm -hmm. But they don't want to come to our communities. They don't want to employ uh, minorities. Um, and that's really the basis of it, you know. Yeah. Okay, I could go off on a tangent, so I'm gonna ask the next question. <laughs> I'm digging in. Okay, April, as a student bust into schools where you are a minority, how do you feel that shaped your views on diversity? Well, that's a great question, and Zach, I went to Palisades. Well, that's a really charged question, because initially when I started, when I participated in the busing program, I moved from I grew up in South Central and we moved over to the hills and Baldwin Hills and I started going to Paul Revere and I was the black girl from the hood with the chip on my shoulder. So I would stand in lines and I take scissors and if you know the white girl in front of me in line for an assembly whatever had would have long hair, I'd cut her hair. I did those things and I wasn't provoked, I wasn't I just had a chip on my shoulder for whatever reason. Um, but after a while, by ninth grade, I was a part of the community. And I was a foreigner back in my old neighborhood in South Central, I was a foreigner because now I moved out of the community and people viewed me as being different because I wasn't born into the Hills crowd, which was at the time a very black bourgeois um, 
area, I wasn't accepted in that area as well. So at Palisades and Paul Revere, I was in the honors program and I was, you know, gifted. So uh, it was cool to be smart. And I felt very embraced, to be honest, by um, the academic community there at Palisades High School. And I really participated in student government. I participated in the social activities. I really immersed myself in the community. And I'm really proud to say that to this day, I have several of my closest friends are from that community. So I know that inclusion and working with and getting to know works. And it allows you to, you know, um, demystify and um, eliminate barriers and preconceived notions and ideas. I love that. Um, and that as black and brown people or people that just want to connect, sometimes you have to work a little harder to find the place where you belong. And I'm sorry, I have my back to the side of the room. Um, and please do that. Please continue to do that because you will find your tribe. You will find your people. Sometimes you might have to step outside of your comfort zone, um, but we have to do that uh, to really come together and get to the justice piece. Um, Okay, so I'm starting to preach. Uh, okay, Purcell. Uh, Purcell, will you talk about the diversity of your employees? Um, we talked a little bit about this in uh, rehearsal, but what challenges and, and benefits um, does the diversity of your staff, um, what have they provided you as a business holder? Well, overall, they've given me, first of all, a lot of insight um, on life itself. Um, yeah, yeah, because there's a lot of, and we have a lot of younger people that, um, you know, we, we have all types of different people that work simply wholesome, all different walks of life, but I guess when I, when I grew up, I was kind of in uh, a bubble. My parents kind of kept me in a little bubble and I kind of knew my direction that, you know, from junior high school to high school, I knew I was going to go to college and the whole nine yards goes it was already kind of set aside and the people that i kind of associated with at that time and i was on a subconscious subconscious basis i think we're all a, our product of our environment uh even if it's on a subconscious basis you know you just that's just the way it is and so i was kind of sheltered to a certain degree and so being in business now and over the years, seeing some of the things that a lot of young people go through, I never experienced it now as an adult. And I can s understand now more why it's so challenging for some of those individuals to grow. Because um, outside of Simply Wholesome, some of my uh, past associates and some that I have now, if they're at work, they're great and you can see the potential and they're really trying to grow and really trying to make some headway with their life. But that's only for a few hours a day. When they go right back into their communities, they have to try to survive. And that's really difficult and it took a, it, it took a minute for me to grasp that because I didn't have to worry about a meal. I didn't have to worry about transportation. I mean, those things were, I didn't even have to think about it. I mean, you know, when I was young, when I was 15, 16, I had a car and all my friends got a car, you know, or have to worry about um, breakfast or things of that nature. Things that was very minute to me were major, major steps. Um, and so um, it's, it's difficult. It's really difficult. Uh, working with the kids and 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 uh, the main thing I think is just um, uh, learning that process in life. One thing that I've noticed with a lot of the millennials, and uh, and I have two daughters, you know, and I work. They're cool, but I they have my challenges too. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie about that, you know, but. Um, did a lot of the millennials or, or the kids that I work with at Simply Wholesome now, they have to have it yesterday. Mm -hmm. It's gotta be like instantly. And they don't really wanna hear what you have to say. They, You can read, the, at least I can, I can read the body language 
and tell that they're just kind of, okay, let me just pacify you and listen, but then it's not really going anywhere. And then they go right back into the same thing. Whereas when I was coming up, uh, we had a lot of basic common sense. You know what I mean? A lot of these kids don't, they might be bright, but they don't have any common sense. And, and they can find something on the internet in 2.5 seconds. Yeah, th yeah, you can find that's it on the internet, it. and that's it. it. But they don't know how how they got there. You know, what's the what's the basic behind that? You know, and to survive in the real world, uh, we all know that you have to understand that process because you can get to a certain point, um, and then all of a sudden hits you, and you realize that you can't go any further. You know, but now you're 25 years old or 30 years old, and now you're trying to hide the fact that you don't really know what's going on, but other people can tell. You know what I mean? And so that becomes a, a frustrating thing within yourself. So, um, yeah, yeah, it's, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a trip. So, I mean, you also, you hit on a theme that I want to draw out a little bit more, and that was um, what people carry into the workplace with them. And oftentimes, workplaces are safe havens for us. Um, it can be a place where you don't have to think about the heaviness of your life or the lack of role models that you have or, you know, just the... I won't say the bad word, but the stuff you're going through. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what I talk to my company about, is recognize that we are, there is an onslaught of negativity, mm -hmm. violence, especially against black and brown people, and that people walk into work and they are carrying that. That is, might as well be a knapsack on their back that they carry around all day. And, go ahead. Yeah, if I, if I can kind of piggyback off that, what, uh, and I've always m mentioned that to April, um, that in our, com I feel in our community, especially with African American men, uh, we have to see somebody doing something. You know, a lot of times we might not be that studious in school. I know I, I just did enough to get by. It's not that I was really a bright student. I, like I said, I kind of knew my framework, so I just did enough to get by. But I was really bored. I really wanted to get out there and do whatever it is that I, I wanted to do, you know? But, um, um, I lose my train of thought, unfortunately. Um, shit. Well, what I, what I, <laughs> people watch, people watch, people do it. Yeah, oh yeah, your mom. Yeah, yeah. Um, what I, yeah, what I was saying is that, you know, um, you have to see, you have to see it. And I use the example of dunking in basketball. You know, what I, from my understanding, it originated out of New York. There were some guys just playing some pickup ball. The Rucker in Harlem. Yeah, there it is, there it is. And, uh, you know, and a brother went up and dunked. He didn't sit there and said, okay, I'm gonna jump this high at this angle and this, that. We're, you know, we're so talented, we just do things. He didn't even know what he was doing. And he went up and did it. Somebody else said, oh man, I can do it like this. Boom, boom. Next thing you know, you know, it gets online or whatever. Other people, other kids in other parts of the country, they see it and it became a norm, you know. Uh, I, I, for myself, I remember when we used to have um, um, uh, career days mm -hmm. and people would come in and they'll be dressed up in uniforms or I'm an attorney or I'm this or that, whatever. And they come in and talk for 10 or 15 minutes. I would listen, but it'd go through one ear and out because I couldn't relate to that. You know, but I can relate to Mr. Jones that might have had the, the, let's say, barber shop or a liquor store that I would go into and buy food and I would see him every day and I would see Mr. Jones doing his thing, socking the shelves or saying, you know, you need to do this, you need to do that. And I could relate to Mr. Jones. The next thing I see Mr. Jones growing, I would listen to Mr. Jones a little bit more because I can touch him, I can talk to him versus somebody that just walked in for 10 or 15 minutes and said, if you go to school, get a good grade, you can right. be like me. Right. Well, honestly, that's why 
the that's why what you and April do is so important because we do need not not everyone has role models in real life or people that they feel that they can relate to and to see you on a consistent basis and be able to look well, up yeah, to we're, you. We're just doing cool. what we naturally love to do because when I originally started Simply Wholesome, when I came up with the idea, I asked some of my friends and I asked people, what do you think about a health oriented place in the community? Everybody said no. They said, first of all, black people are not going to support you. Second of all, um, if you're going to do something like that, you need to go further west. But obviously, I didn't listen because I lived in the community and I got tired of driving outside of the community to get something that I felt was halfway decent to eat. And I will say one more thing before I hand it over to April. Um, there was a friend of mine that I went to high school and UCLA with. He presented a challenge to me. And what had happened that particular day was that we were in my apartment and I said, you know, I'm hungry, um, and I made the statement to him, somebody needs to open up a health oriented place in the community. And he looked at me, and he said, you know what your problem is, Purcell? And I said, what? He says, you think too small. He said, I've been knowing you since high school, and I've always been an entrepreneur. And he says, you always get into things, but you make just enough money to get by. Now, I had the location in Jacqueline's, and I, at that time, that's, I was just making enough money on a subconscious basis now for my car, for my apartment, to party, to do whatever. But I didn't think about growing. I was in a comfort zone because everything was rolling, you know, I'm cool, you know. But when he said that, it made me think. He says, why does it have to be somebody else? You're already doing it. And I thought about it and the rest is history. Then I found my niche. <laughs> April, people often think of diversity only in terms of race and gender, especially in America. You're passionate about inspiring young entrepreneurs. What do you think these young minds bring to the business landscape? Oh my God, I think the, the young entrepreneurs, they don't have limits. They don't have teaching saying, this is where you have to start, this is the box, and then you have to create in the box. I'm looking at these young entrepreneurs here that I personally know in this room, and they don't think like that. And I'm so encouraged by that. They just do it. And we've had, I've had so many people bring products to us at Simply Wholesome that they were making. We have a young lady that was making um, popcorn, selling it in Lamert Park in a baggie. She had never, she'd go every weekend and she would sell out. She brought the popcorn to us in the baggie. I tasted it, we tasted it, looked at the list of ingredients. I was like, this is wonderful. And you know, she allowed me to mentor to her to get proper labeling, get proper packaging, get liability insurance, start a legitimate business, do a DBA, the whole nine yards, and her product, we can't keep it on the shelves. And she was just doing what she naturally did, and it was a healthy vegan product that was a snack, and people could eat as much of it as they wanted and didn't have to feel guilty like there was too much sugar, too much salt, because in our community, historically, sugar and salt are um, health challenges, causes ch health challenges for us. And the young people have already seen people go out on a bad note. And so they're not going, they're not developing those types of habits from the beginning. And so I'm just, I love the fact that the sky is absolutely the limit for these young entrepreneurs. Yes. And I'm so happy Simply Wholesome is there. So they have their product, they can bring it on in, we can put it on the shelf, yes. and then they can blow up. And um, it gives me nothing, no more pleasure than to see that happen. I absolutely love that. Thank you for doing that. I love that too. Um, Purcell, how has the diversity of your employees changed over time? How has it changed over time? Um, or has it changed? Over well, time? yeah, I, I'm just, I'm just, 
kind of running it through my mind right now. Um, yes, it's changed. Um, yes, it has changed. I would say that uh, we have a lot more diversity uh, uh, as far as nationalities. Working at Simply Wholesome now, uh, years ago, was primarily um, African American or Caribbean people. Um, but now we've kind of stretched out because the community is changing. And uh, so, like any business, you have to have your ear to the ground and you have to make adjustments. And uh, other cultures are feeling, I think, uh, more comfortable coming and putting in applications as Simply Wholesome, whereas before um, they did not do that. It wasn't the fact that we would not hire someone, it's just that, you know, people wasn't putting in applications. And so I think uh, from that perspective, it's definitely changing. And also I would say that um, uh, the individuals that are coming to us now want to work at Simply Wholesome. It's not just a job. Okay. You know, they want to come, they want to learn, they want to be in that environment. And that makes a big difference too. They're making a conscious choice to come here and work with us and, you know, doing a great job. And have you seen a similar um, evolution in your customers? The diversity of your customers? Yes. Uh, yes, it has. It, it, that's very interesting. Um, we're getting a lot more diversity, and it's coming slowly. Uh, first of all, it's primarily through the the females. The guys are pretty much kind of hanging back, and I guess when they get a good report from their counterparts, they feel more comfortable coming in or coming in with them. Um, but we still uh, get some individuals that come in kind of like with um, um, low arrogance or a little um, attitudes, you know, um, like we we're supposed to be kind of subservient. Mm -hmm. And one good thing about Simply Wholesome is that like April mentioned is, is because uh, it's our place. So we can pretty much tell you what we want to say <laughs> and you can't call the corporate office and um, get, us fired. get us fired you know um, it, it was very interesting just this past Saturday and I haven't me personally haven't really experienced this in, in, in a while but I happen to be we're really busy and we had the band playing in the patio and everything and I was taking orders in a line, and I came across this gentleman, uh, Caucasian gentleman, <clears throat> and I asked what would he like, and uh, if he said, he looked around and he said, man, and I, 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 when I'm going to say it out of the way I wasn't going to say it, it wasn't so you can get a jest, but it wasn't exactly, but basically he looked around and he said, man, this is great, this is really great, this, I can't believe this. Um, you should put this on Facebook. And I said, we're on, we are on Facebook, you know, so people would know about it. And I, and I said, we're all on Facebook. They said, you know, you should stream this. This should really be streamed, this music, so people can hear it. And I, and I knew what he mean by people. But and then I said to him, well, we want people to come in here and experience it. And he looked around and he said, I just can't believe being in the hood something like this would be here. And when he said hood, I was like, okay. <laughs> and so I said, what do you mean by the hood? And he said, and he looked, he says, I, oh, am I offending you? I said, no, you're not offending me. I'm just curious, what do you mean by the hood? And then he, he said, oh, I must be offending you. And I said, no. I said, I'm just curious, what do you mean by the hood? He kept jumping around it and trying to reverse it as if now I'm causing the problem. And so, you know, but I'm cool. So, you know, so I said to him, I said, so where do you live? Where'd you grow up? He says, oh, I'm from Malibu. And so I said, Malibu's a hood. It's just a different neighborhood, but it's, it's all hood, you know? And then, you know, he looked at me and he, and I said, well, let's, let's, let me just go ahead and go along with your, your order. And, he said, and so then he started muttering, 
You know, he said, well, let, me, let me have a latte. <laughs> you know, and so, <laughs> and so I said, well, you know, we don't sell lattes. You, you mean a place like this doesn't have a latte? And I said, no. And he said, well, just give me a coffee. And so, and so, <laughs> after I wrote down coffee, I said, is there anything else? And he muttered something else. I said, you don't have to get nervous, because I can tell from his body. And he didn't know what to say, because he wasn't expecting me to challenge him. challenge him, you know, and so, and so I told, you know, I said, you know, you know I don't understand what you're saying, you're, you're, you know, you're mumbling, he says, you know what, that's okay, and what was interesting about this, I didn't know at the time, is that um, he came in with an African-American woman, and they went out to the patio, and, um, <coughs> I didn't know at the time, but after this conversation, he walked away. I guess he went and got her, obviously he left. About 20 minutes later, I was standing outside talking to some other customers, and this young man walked up to me that was actually standing next to him. I thought they were together, but they wasn't. He, you know, 30, he might have been in his mid-30s. And he walked over and he said, I just want to thank you for checking him. And I said, sure, no problem. He said, you know, because when he walked in, I was sitting listening to the band, and he walked in, he stood around with his girl, well, the young lady, I don't know what the relationship was. And so he said, I asked them, I stood up and said, hey, you guys can have my seat. And he said, the guy said to him, yeah, 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 get up, get up, get up, get up, get up, with, with his hand. And I didn't know that, obviously, at the time, I probably would have dug into him a little bit deeper. <laughs> <laughs> but the young man said to me, it really teed him off, but he said, I'm trying to make that transition. So he said it was nice that the universe had my elder check him for me five minutes later. So it's just interesting how things work out. Mm -hmm. you well, you never know who's watching. Well, hey, that's really, I don't know now. That's really, really <laughs> We were out of time. We knew this was gonna happen when we were yeah. when we were rehearsing. Get on, so get on our role. yes. Right. One thing I say. Okay. There's this one thing I want to say that we did bring these um, cards here, and I encourage everyone to take one at, at at the counter at the entrance. On the back is a partial listing of the over 100 vendors of color black and brown and services that we do business with at Simply Wholesome. This is something that we are extremely proud of and know that whenever you come and spend a dollar at Simply Wholesome, you help turn your dollar over many times in black and brown communities across this country and stretching back to Mother Africa. So thank you very much. Thank you.